Yo, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Um, we are back with another video. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Um, you guys know I'm gonna say that every single video. So, uh, yeah. Um, I recently did just get uh a email about Apex. They're doing some like huge offer where you don't have to take like seven days to pass like an account anymore. You could just do it in one. So, um, I would recommend buying a few accounts for a 71% off discount at the moment. Um, just use that code in the top of the video um r b e e f y c s okay so use that code i am looking at getting my code changed to dodgy so maybe it'll be easier to type in in a few but that's the code for now and then if you want to watch my uh, live streams every single day um just click the wap link in the description below i did do a free live stream today and i will be uploading the recording on my public youtube probably later tonight okay for anyone wondering um so if you're interested just watch that um that's literally an example of a live stream i do so i'll upload that tonight all right, so for this video, I'm going to be going over five textbook inversions and why they were textbook, all right? So I'm going to make it very, very simple. First inversion right here. Um, by the way, if you have not watched my inversion playlist, um, I'll leave a link in the description below for the inversion playlist. You should definitely go watch it. There's about 11 videos, and they're not very long, so uh, it's how to trade inversions. All right, so the first example right here is one... Okay, if we go to the five minute time frame or we go to the hourly, it doesn't really matter which one, there's a fair value gap to the left. Okay, and if we think about our checklist, okay, is that fair value gap, is the body holding a fair value gap to the left? Are we delivering off of some sort of PD rate? And in this example, the answer would be yes. Okay, and if you want to even get more technical, if you draw CE of this fair value gap, okay, you can see we bounce almost from CE. Okay, so if you draw it from the Low of this candle to the high of this candle, you get CE, which is the 50% marking, okay, which is consequent encroachment, which ICT calls it, and we were delivering from there. Okay, the second reason because is why this textbook is because we have a singular fair value gap in this leg. Okay, there's no fair value gap here, there's no fair value gap here. Okay, this is closed. And we close above it. And the reason why I like this one so much is because we had just dumped so much that I would at least expect a retracement back to premium. So if we draw a premium from this high to this low, I would at least expect us to retrace back to premium, which means I'm expecting us retrace to retrace back up to that 0.5 level because that's how the market likes to move. Okay, after a big dump like that, that's what you usually see. Now, this is a singular fair value gap. The close is so good because we close above this and see how it's not like an outrageously high close, meaning this is not the risk award. The risk award is actually a lot better because the close is here. So in this one, I actually would have put my stop below this low because this low is inside of a fair value gap. And typically if the bias is bullish, we should not go back to that low. So I felt like this was a good hard stop. And then you kind of get a 1.27 RR here. Um, so you can clearly just, you can see there's almost no drawdown on this trade. It was the three minute was also inverse as well. A um, lot of a lot of momentum going up here. Even just these three candles are pretty bullish. And then what do you target? You target the next internal high, which would be right here is like the big obvious one, and it's ahead of this fair value gap. And if the bias is bearish, we will reject one of these. But at least you know where you should go to those, especially when this inversion activates. So um, I would probably be mostly out here, maybe hold a runner, but would not be confident in a runner passing these. Um, so that was the first textbook one. Second textbook one is, um, it was this morning in the one minute. Okay. We had a really nice big gap here. It was very obvious. If you backed away from a screen, it was very obvious. And then we took out this low. And the one thing about taking out this low is there was not a lot of displacement. Okay. I like the fact that there's not a lot of displacement. Um, I, I would, you're probably looking at this, you're probably wondering if this was textbook. I honestly would say this is textbook because this only, it's the only bearish for value up in the leg. The only reason I don't like this as much is because we were kind of delivering out of here. So no guarantee that's going to work. But I mean, looking back at it, this is something that's probably going to have like a 70% win rate. Maybe not like a 90, but definitely like a 60, 70% win rate for a play like this. But I think this is fine just because we barely delivered off this. And then you can see once we you deliver off this we have a really nice target and the reason why i say this is a really nice target is because it's kind of one of those abnormal wicks and usually these abnormal wicks get taken out okay it's like a bigger than normal you can see it it's very obvious so the risk award in a play like this would have been you would have entered when this candle closed above okay and then your stop would have been a close back below i feel like there's not really any not really any good stops here i mean you could have put your stop maybe below this low 
because technically this is a low inside of fair value gap so maybe you could have adjusted a little bit here but it's all up to you um and then your first target would have been here for about a one r and then your second target would have been here for about a 2.6 r and you can see the second target never ends up hitting but this was still a good target because there's equal highs here so it just makes sense for us to hit okay i admit this was a little dirty but this would have been a good target in my opinion um so that was the second play, okay? For the third, this one I did not take. Um, I did point this out on my live stream. I actually pointed this out as a 2022 model, and I said I kind of liked it, but I was kind of sidetracked, uh, sidetracked, and I did not see how good this was. So I think I was on MNQ, and MNQ looked like it didn't close below, so I didn't really pay attention to it. But the reason why I like this one is because on the hourly, there was an hourly SMT to the downside. Okay, so basically. NQ did not hit this high. And if you look at ES, you can see ES did hit the high. So we had an SMT at the top. Okay, this made this play a good play because here's your liquidity sweep. We barely sweep liquidity. Okay, the difference between this liquidity sweep and this one right here for this high is this one, we never broke this for a value gap. This is the last one in the leg and the body's held it. This one, this was the last one in this leg. So this one was much better. Okay, and the displacement was just insane in this one. So this one would not have been valid because this body is still holding. This one is valid because this body closes to the last possible one. And you can clearly see just after what happens. And we on this one, we also had low resistance liquidity, just meaning we had a bunch of stops in a row to take out. So, I mean, um, that was pretty good there. So that was the third one. Again, another pretty textbook one. Um, and it lined up with the 2022 model as well, which makes it even better. Um, and the bearish SMT at the top, obviously. So that was the third one. Okay. Now the fourth one was actually an ES and this was textbook, although it was against my rules to trade, but I know some people did trade this. So this one, we swept liquidity again, and you can see we barely swept liquidity. We got barely in a displacement. And then the other thing was we were delivering out of a little 15 minute for value gap. Okay. So if you look at ES here. And go to the left. This was a 50 minute for rally gap, and it was also a 50 minute order block. So it kind of combined. So because we were delivering off this 15 minute order block, and we got the three minute inversion, okay, all kind of lined up together. Um, you can see this was a textbook play because it's a singular for rally gap. We barely swept the low, bounce off an order block, and you can see the candle does close below. So your risk reward would look something like this, and your stop would be a close back below and then your take profit here would probably be this high okay because it's kind of relative equal high so nice four r there again i would not have taken this because we had fomc but i know some people still did so this is fine play um and yeah that's the fourth inversion uh the fifth inversion um is right here so this is another textbook play so if we look at this one right here we go in the five minute, you can clearly see you're probably like, oh, there's two for every leg ups in this leg. So why is this failed? Well, when we break this one, I know we're going to go to this one. And I kind of calculate, I'm like, okay, is this enough points to go to this one? So we kind of close above here. And this is actually one I would not market by. Like I would not market by this because we're so close to this. This one, I would wait for a retrace and then I'd probably take a, a, entry like probably at the midpoint of this for value gap if we got it and that would make the risk award better and then i'd at least target this for value gap and then i end up and then i would target the high and the high did hit but that's what i would do personally this one is just not enough risk to award for me to buy a market close here you can see the risk awards way worse it's horrible so this one you really want to wait for a retrace if we get it now sometimes you won't get it here but that's all right um, and you can see the stop loss held, right? There's no, there's not really any intermediate term low to put a stop under, but the stop would be the close below the fair value gap, which does end up holding in this situation right here. Okay, so this is fine because even though there's two in the same leg, I know that this one, if we inverse this, is probably at least going to bring us up to this one. And then if we'll bearish, we're, we're going to reject this one. So it's like a little scalp you can get in. It's still decent risk award, about a 1.36, especially if you enter like the midpoint here. Um, but this is one of the only times where I will not typically market by if the, if the close is way above. And even though we hadn't technically hit the target yet or the internal liquidity or the internal fair value gap, 
this would have been a good pullback entry to get in because we hadn't hit that and we kind of came close come back down it's still an inversion and usually that means we're going to go back up later so um hey if you uh want to test out an inversion or want to test out these plays make sure to buy an apex account link in the uh description um and yeah that's about it for now hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you have any questions and uh yeah peace